So what do you say we pay a visit to the emergency coastal artillery battery? Oh, go on then, back up I go. to be quite a mammoth day but here we have it uh, we have two um, covered emplacements so we can see the slightly disrupted shape uh, it, is, it is grass and sand and earth on top um, to give it a little bit of camouflage from the sky um, but this that essentially provides it with air cover so these were designed to house six inch most likely six inch mark seven um, coastal artillery guns. Uh, most of these guns weren't uh, manufactured in the 1940s to arm these forts. They are probably early 20th century, 1900-ish um, age weapons um, that were repurposed during the war for these emergency coastal artillery batteries. And generally by emergency battery we mean they were constructed and equipped very quickly in um, late 40, 1941, um, for the perceived threat of invasion, as opposed to more established coastal artillery batteries that typically were around from the Victorian era, so covering all the major ports um, around the UK and indeed around the world, but I think the, the emergency batteries were, um, were, were constructed around the UK. So the large hole fast in the centre was for that single six inch um, coastal gun, each of these positions is the same, um, but I've just noticed what I, I can only assume is an earlier holdfast that was perhaps mispositioned. Um, what may have happened was a, a, a quick plinth of concrete was, was poured to defend the area and it may be that, that perhaps this, this slab that we can, we can see here was initially poured in a, in a gun in the open air was mounted. Um, then later the, the, uh, the battery of this emplacement certainly may have been redesigned and the, the whole fast moved across. But uh, yeah, certainly that's a, an interesting addition. And that addition may not have not be st steel plate, they may be, be threaded bar or, um, or bolts uh, fixed into the concrete. Whereas here um, we have the, the bar uh, welded to the steel plate um, then with it with a huge structure below it and um, that's not just a plate bolted on there was a huge amount of force involved so let's have a quick look around um, this position so a mixture of reinforced concrete has been used in the superstructure and the roof but then interestingly they've used red brick and they've um, they've built this brick wall um, in the center and that, I believe, would have been for the uh, ready-use ammunition and uh, things like the cleaning equipment, firefighting buckets um, and so on would have been kept behind here, I believe, because there are no ammunition lockers um, situated anywhere, anywhere around here, although the ammunition may have been out in the open for a, a, certainly, certainly for that initial firefight. Uh, the position is surrounded, as most are, um, from this era with loopholes, so this, this would become a defensible structure. Um, so the troops uh, at, the, at the rear when the gun isn't firing, or while the gun is firing, could then be, be protecting themselves. And you can see these loopholes all around. Uh, if we then go down, and it starts to get quite echoey and dark, um, we have what I think would have been the crew shelter. So in here, this is where the, uh, where the, where the crew waiting would have, would have been. If this had been a a magazine and typically you wouldn't have a magazine so close um, and so open to a gun. I would have expected much more secure um, door frame fitted as well as none of these windows. However, 
we see that there are more loopholes. This is a, a very defensible structure indeed. You can see uh, the, the loopholes to, to defend the rear, the rear of the structure. Uh, coming out here, and we will, we'll have a look around the forest. There are the other ancillary structures that we would expect. Um, and then we're, we're now outside, um, effectively, that, that room. And we can, we can come in the opposite side, which will take us straight up to the gun. So this, this is most likely the route that the ammunition would have been brought up from the, uh, from the buried magazine would have taken. So there we have one, and I'll not do the second one. As I say, they are, they are identical in their construction. Um, but that is one of two um, six-inch gun positions of the um, emergency coastal battery. So let's have a look deeper um, at some of the other ancillary structures that exist within this forest. So with the rear of the position we've just come in, we now come down into this sand dune area. In the distance here, we have the, 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 the semi-sunken, uh, the buried magazine. Um, in front of us, we have the crew shelter, I believe, where the, um, the rest of the crews would have um, would have waited while on duty before manning the guns and somewhere I can't quite locate it at the moment but uh, deeper in there are the uh, generator houses uh, to power uh, there are two coastal artillery searchlight positions and then there's a third uh, power station or generator room really um, which would uh, power the electronics and the, the general ancillary lighting around this um, this structure so here we go this is what I believe is the uh, crew shelter, one big room, um, two entrances with uh, sort of revetted sides, and we then come inside, and it's, as I say, it's just it's just one one large room. Now the walls have been painted, but if you notice around the base, this bit hasn't been painted. So that to me would suggest that that's, that's probably with a bench would have been for the crews waiting and that's on both sides um, as well then as the board here this this may have been just some um, electrical switchboard or fixings uh, there was probably probably a shelf here that would have held held something uh, maybe maybe a tea point who knows uh, so that is the Sort of the, the crew shelter, or perhaps it could be could be even called an area shelter. Uh, so let's now go and have a look at the magazine. So here we are entering the semi-sunken magazine, and I call it semi-sunken because they've essentially dug a little bit into the ground, but actually the depth is has come from. The, the sand and earth that has been piled up on top um, and down by the sides. And actually, once we see inside, that, that is the height of the vaulted ceiling. It is, it is huge for what I would have expected. And there isn't that much air cover um, or, or roof cover um, on, on top of it, which is surprising. So coming down, we can see there would have been one large steel door at the front. We can see the hinges at that side, and then we can see the, the latch on that side. So one big single door. We then come into this first room, as I say, with that really large vaulted ceiling. Um, I'm not sure what these channels are for. I've never seen that before, nor have I seen um, holes in the roof. That may indeed have been for loading ammunition down, perhaps, using a crane. Um, but yeah, as I say, these, these channels are unusual down both sides. And then we come into the uh, main magazine bit itself, same again, we have two hinges on one side and two latches on the other, so a single steel door um, bringing us in here. And this is actually a really large space for a magazine. I'm not sure why it has been built um, so tall. Uh, there are some um, wooden sockets in the wall, it may just have been for securing securing shelves and um, to store the ammunition on. And then we have that, that's our exit door. Yeah, huge vaulted ceiling. 
Um, and interestingly, it's, it is reasonably damp, but it's not as damp as I would have expected. But there is no ventilation. Normally, magazines, there is a, a large, um, they're very well ventilated. But I have been, been round, I, I try to, to look at all the usual places that uh, people may have left graffiti, contemporary graffiti that is, um, but I didn't didn't find any. You normally find them in places where people spend a lot of time, area shelters, um, sangers or pillboxes, um, where people people just get, get bored and want, want to leave their mark in the days before smartphones and the internet. So we're down in uh, just to the rear of this we can see we have one position two positions there's the crew shelter magazines behind us and here is there are two more buildings i'd like to show you one is one of these um, engine houses um, and judging by the position of this this is the engine house for the uh, to power parliament main battery um, itself not the not either one of the um, electric searchlights they had their own engine house uh, located quite close to them uh, and the second building, the final building, is the battery observation post, which actually sits to the right of both of the uh, gun positions. It sits, it sits up on that hill over there. So I'm not going to stop the video. We'll just roll straight into it as we are indeed so close. Uh, and here we go. And this paint, some, some of these, the camouflage pattern is, is really fascinating. This, this one, not so much. Um, but yeah, some, some of these, these buildings have been, been camouflaged really well. Um, so, how do we know it's a, an engine house? And if you've been to any restored batteries, I may even be able to put a photograph from one in Gibraltar if memory serves me right. Um, this particular plinth pattern would have had a Lister diesel generator and electrical generating um, apparatus at the front of it, so yeah, diesel generator and um, electric. So whenever you see plinths like this, it's typically because it's housing um, generating equipment or an engine of some sort. And then we can see a hole, hole in the back wall, which was likely for um, the fuel line to get the fuel from the outside in. Uh, and then the corner, the only other feature that I'm, I'm not particularly sure what it is, is the, you see the little witness marks of almost like a cubicle in the corner. It may be that that was, that was just a series of shells and those were the edges um, that, that were holding it up. Or indeed it may, it may have been a cupboard um, for the various lubricants and spares to keep the generator running. So let us now move on to the final building, the battery observation post. As we make our way to the battery observation post, I thought actually it was too good not to, was to stop and admire the camouflage pattern. So this was one of the engine houses for the searchlights. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's been camouflaged very nicely. Not something we see um, left on many structures. Uh, but as you can see, it, it, seems, it seems to have been camouflaged in yellow and brown, really to represent and reflect the terrain that it sits in. So yeah, some lovely camouflage of what, um, of what pretty much every building, I imagine, would have looked like um, if it wasn't bunded or covered in sand. But certainly look at the roof, look at the beautiful grassy roof on that, how that has come up with a full-size tree growing in the middle. So onwards and literally upwards to the observation post. And here we are at the last structure of the uh, emergency artillery battery. We have this very fine looking uh, observation post. Constructed same method as before. We have the concrete superstructure and roof and just take a moment to appreciate the the broken edge of that roof to help break up the shape from uh, from air surveillance. Um, yep, yeah, so there have been large large windows and shutters uh, going right the way around to the edge of this. The rangefinder plinth sitting in the middle with a number of segregated rooms with some lovely paintwork on the inside as well.
So here we are coming in to one of the, the rooms at the rear with the brick internals. That lovely um, sort of teal lower. Um, that grey is actually just the cement. That's where a uh, where a shelf would have sat. Coming around to the second room, which uh, I'm not sure what this was, what this particularly was for. Um, but seeing we have we have the the two tone paint work with the shelf, um, but also we have this nice what looks like a witness of where they were tracked tracked cables that they couldn't when they were painting the wall after the the, the cable conduit had been put in they didn't quite cover and then we have yeah witness more barks of electrical boxes and switch gear unfortunately the large hole punched in the wall but it um, it does look like that this would have been a window at some stage because we've got a we've actually got a concrete lintel uh, in there and then into the main um, observation deck itself. And there we go with that grange finder plinth. And unfortunately vegetation has, has grown up and we, we no longer really have a clear view out to the sea or to the rest of the battery which sits over there. So there we have it, the composition uh, magazine, crew shelter and battery observation coasts and generator house. Wow, we saw a lot of the emergency coastal artillery battery. I've come across this structure. So this absolutely appears to be man-made. It's on top of a high point between one of the gun positions and the battery observation post in there. Now this may be an infantry fighting position uh, or it may be uh, an emergency um, observation post for ranging in the guns in an emergency but this has absolutely been man-made if we have a look now there are a lot don't ask me why but there are a lot of shoes around not just around the forest but around the beach as well and this in fact as you can see the hobnail or you can see the, the metal plate um, on the shoe and we've also got this chicken wire that either that may have given it some overhead cover or maybe just to, to help um, keep the ground in but wow this is this, this other brick of the, of the same yeah we can so we can see where the steel plate used to be and certainly we can see rusty hobnails so these these may in fact be um, be shoes from from somebody as, as to why they would be here I don't know maybe just part of the detritus that was left um, whenever the whenever the army moved out absolutely fascinating but yeah this is more than certainly uh, an infantry fighting position dug in above so unfortunately I probably have a few miles of walking left and we have to attract these anti-tank defences all the way back to Kingstown. So we better get out of here. Mm -hmm.